Greetings! This lecture is on sustainability. There's only a few short slides, but there are a number of videos in here that I want you to review and to, to listen to. So this lecture will take you approximately an hour for no other reason than there are four video clips that I want you to watch as you go through the lecture. Um, the material itself is, is fairly short and succinct. So when we think about the concept of sustainability in business, we're talking about it in two different ways. Number one is the more traditional way when we think about a business has to be sustainable, which means it needs a good business plan or a good strategic plan. It has to be adaptable and flexible to the market, and it needs to make sure that it's using practices that are appropriate without creating legal liability. Sort of that, um, um, as you'll hear in the lecture on stakeholders and corporate social responsibility, this idea that we have a legal obligation in terms of our corporate social responsibility behavior. The other aspect of sustainability, which of course is much more imperative nowadays, is this idea that um, the products and services that we offer um, may have an economic impact, and it may be that the products and services that we offer may be part of doing something that makes the environment more sustainable, makes manufacturing more sustainable. So some of the key questions to think about are, you know, are the products and services that we are creating, um, does it have a negative impact on the environment? You know, for example, as we, um, as we make uh, coal um, and we mine coal, does the mining of the coal, the process, and the process of cleaning the coal and getting it ready for use, public use, is this creating a problem with the environment? We look at the issues of coal ash and the impact that that has, um, you know, cleaning uh, up the coal. And we saw, you know, a year ago, two separate spills, almost back to back in relatively close proximity um, of companies that are... Um, had chemical spills and coal ash spills that contaminated drinking water for their local communities. Um, so um, we'll talk about a little bit of that in, in class. And the other thing is the company itself, a green manufacturer, you know, are they engaged in manufacturing green products? Um, you know, do you make sustainable products like, you know, uh, bamboo flooring? Um, or are you creating a product that is infinitely sustainable so that it can be recycled and reused and you're using old materials and you're creating this what we call this closed loop process where you're using something, the waste from that creates an input for another thing, the waste from that creates an input for something else and ultimately cycles back to it, a purpose that you initially used in the first place so it creates a closed loop cycle. And closed loop cycles are good when it comes to sustainability because it doesn't, it's just, it sort of um, keeps the energy within that closed loop. Um, you know, you're not losing stuff, you're not wasting things. Um, the other thing is, is the product mix that we're engaging also sustaining, you know, green manufacturing? So those are the basics of the, the major questions that we, when we think about sustainability, why it's important. The three pillars of sustainability include the economy, society, and the environment. And as you can see from those rings, the economy is very much constrained by and economic growth. It should be constrained by um, the impact on society as a whole, as well as the environmental impact. And you can see this is, a, this is a real foundational issue in corporate social responsibility. It's impossible for us to grow an economy beyond the benefits of society as a whole, as well as beyond the limits of, of, um, of the environment. We have very clear environmental resource limits, and we can't grow beyond that. So sustainability is about responsible, proactive decision-making um, and being innovative and making sure that we have a negative impact on the, econ on the ecology that's around us. So we want to have ecological resilience, we want economic prosperity, we want political justice and social, social and cultural vibrancy to ensure that it's a planet that is, works well for everybody now and into the future. And, and there's a great uh, citation there if you're interested in reading that particular article. It goes on to talk about that there are three basic areas in which we see sustainability in agriculture, in agriculture, our architecture rather, and ecological economics. Not environmental economics, but ecological economics. And we'll talk about the, the subtle difference between the two in a few moments. 
So we'll start briefly with sustainable agriculture. And the goal here with sustainable agriculture is that we want an integrated system where plants and animals um, can be renewed um, regularly, that we've got access to all the raw materials and the resources we need to be able to grow food and use our environment in a way that's, that's renewable and sustainable. Um, if we clear cut trees and we don't replace trees, we're losing, you know, the trees. I mean, think about a tree, right? I mean, you're going to, you're going to hear in the next video, next page, a video clip from William McDonough, um, trees are fundamental to our, our ecosystem. They, you know, filter air, they make, um, they take carbon dioxide, they make it into oxygen for us. It, it helps, you know, secure ground um, land um, with the root systems. There's, there's so many wonderful things that trees do and we cut it down and we ride on it. You know, so if you think about it, sort of in an ironic way. So the goal of sustainable agriculture is how can we create systems and, and ways of, of, of um, using our resources and farming in a way that we don't deplete the, you know, the environment um, uh, of useful, you know, uh, resources, that we're not depleting all of the nutrients out of the soils. And again, if you go and you think about the way agriculture has existed and sustained in a lot of Asian cultures for hundreds and hundreds of years, they've been you know, farming the same lands over and over again, and they understand nutrient flow and water flow and air and, and all these things. And when you understand that, you can continue to use the land over and over again for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. You know, we have so many situations here in the United States, and California comes to mind, where you know, we've tried to sort of push the square peg in the round hole. We've tried to make, you know, a desert grow fruits and vegetables, and it's wonderful that it can, but it's now has no longer has enough water to sustain, um, you know, the agricultural growing in California. So we may find our fruits and vegetables, and the cost of that is going to go up, which makes it much more challenging for people to, uh, to maintain their um, their food budgets. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a harm. So um, the link below, Starbucks Global Report, click on that. It's a great example of how Starbucks has um, taken this idea of sustainable agriculture to mind and it is part of their mission to make sure that they're um, engaging in practices with the farmers who grow the coffee beans to make sure that they're engaging in sustainable practices and also paying them good money so that they as a society can survive and have uh, and have economic value um, and be able to contribute to the economy. So you can see this this idea. We want economic viability for farm operations, and that's exactly what Starbucks does, and that's exactly what they're highlighting in their report.